Yesterday, we finished our discussion about this structure, the core components of the neshama of the soul, specifically of the godly soul. So we spoke about the intellectual components, the emotional components, and today we are going to find out how all that leads ultimately to behavior. In terms of behavior, Tanya talks about three different types of behavior. There's actual action, there is speech, which is also a behavior, and there's thought. When we're talking about thought, we're talking about willful, conscious thought. When we choose to think about a certain thing, which also, to a certain degree, is considered a behavior. These three, thought, speech, and action, in Tanya, they are called levushim. They are called the garments of the soul. Why are they called the garments of the soul? Because just as garments express who we are, which is why we don't walk around in um, cardboard boxes or wearing sackcloth, because we want to wear clothing that express who we are, the same thing is also, the soul expresses itself, our identity, our personality expresses itself in our thoughts, in our words, and in our behaviors. Now, since we're talking here about the godly soul, so what kind of, uh, what, we, what, what exactly are we talking about? So the intellect of the godly soul expresses itself through studying Torah, understanding Torah. The, um, the emotions of the godly soul, the ava and the yira, the love and the awe of the godly soul. So the love of the godly soul expresses itself by doing mitzvahs. Why is that? The godly soul, it has a love for God, and it knows that the way to connect to God is to doing mitzvahs, so it expresses itself in the action of doing mitzvahs. And on the flip side, the yira, the awe of the godly soul, expresses itself in the fact that the person abstains from doing averis, from doing transgressions, because of awe and respect for God. So what we have over here is we have the core identity of the soul, which is, it's, again, its intellectual and emotional faculties, and then its expressions, its garments, how it expresses itself in terms of behavior. And the question now becomes, which is more important? The core components, the essential personality of the soul, which again is its intellect and emotions, or perhaps its behaviors, its thought, its speech, and its actions. Now, we might be tempted to say, well, of course, the main thing is action, right? Everything ultimately boils down, you know, when you're in a relationship, the main thing is how you behave. But that's actually not correct. Think about it, in a relationship. We say the main thing that matters is behavior. But why is that? Because if a person doesn't behave appropriately, what does that mean? That means that they don't have the feelings, that they're not invested in the relationship. At the end of the day, behavior is a result of the relationship. It does not constitute the relationship itself. The relationship is when two people love each other, two people respect each other. And then because we have a relationship, so I speak in a certain way and I behave in a certain way and even I think in a certain way, but ultimately there is who I am and there's what the relationship is, which is part of the core components of the soul. And then there's the expressions, the levushim and the garments. However, as we will find out tomorrow, in our relationship with God, things are a little different. Actually, what's more important in our relationship with God is our behaviors, more so actually than the core components of the soul. Why is that? Come back tomorrow and you'll find out.